Good morning. Welcome again to the Bethany Associate Reformed Presbyterian Church as we come together to worship the Lord our God in a moment of devotional scripture reading. And as we gather together here in the book of Hebrews, uh, we're going to be in chapter 2, verses 5 through 9. And so let us go to the Lord in prayer as we prepare to join him in his word. Gracious Heavenly Father, you who have given unto us another blessed week, as we look forward uh, to the, this week, we know so much is happening, so much is going on, so much is on our minds. But we are blessed in the truth uh, that all of these anxiousness and all of these worries are in your hands. And we, dear God, recognize that you are our strength, you are our grace, and you alone are our mercy in light of eternity. And dear God, may our hearts focus upon these things that we might forever find our rest and our trust in that rock which shall never be moved. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen. So this morning we turn uh, to Hebrews chapter 2 verses 5 through 9. Hear the word of the Lord. For he has not put the world to come of which we speak in subjection to angels. But one testified in a certain place, saying, What is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you care of him? You have made him a little lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor, and set him over the works of your hands. You have put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him. He left nothing that is not put under him. But now we do not yet see all things put under him. But we see Jesus, who is made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, might taste death for everyone. Amen. Now, as you might have figured out, this passage is all about Jesus. It's all about his sovereignty, his authority, his kingship, over this present world. Now, the particular way that Paul uses it here in verse 5 is of the gospel church. For he has not put the world to come of which we speak in subjection to angels. That is, God the Father has not made angels to rule over us. He has not made angels to rule over the earth. But he has given that authority to his Son our Savior and Redeemer. And as we think about that, Paul wants us to further comprehend the long-term planning that has gone into this. Now, Paul here is meaning that from before the foundation of the world, God had ordained that this is the way the gospel church would operate. And so he goes there to this uh, particular psalm, which he uh, quotes again from Psalm 8, and we hear a testimony that David looked forward to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. One thing worth noting here is that we are not to read into this that God was somehow not in control in the Old Testament, and David was looking forward to the day when God would take the reins. However, what we do see here is that the ministry of Jesus Christ has been expanded in the new covenant. Having taken on flesh, having become as man, having left the heavenly places, as we read in Philippians chapter 2, having done all these things, what is the culmination? It is that Jesus, who has become lower than the angels, now the testimony here is not that men are below angels, we're all, we're meant to think of this almost spatially, right? God, the Son, has gone from being in heaven to being on the earth. So he's gone from being above the angels to below the angels. You know, thinking of the angels above us in that sense. And having taken on this flesh and having done all these things, he has been crowned with glory and honor. And God has set him over the works of your hand. So Jesus here is being spoken of in the context of the ascension into heaven, that he 
who has fulfilled all righteousness through his life, through his death, through his resurrection, is now being placed on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. This is the 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 the, the seating of Jesus on the throne. And he is ruling from that throne. You know, one of the things we believe the Bible to teach is that Jesus is not waiting for the opportunity to be king. He's not waiting for the go-ahead from the Father to return to earth and establish an earthly kingdom. That kingdom that Jesus has already exists. That throne that he has, he's already seated on. And when he comes again, it will be the end of history. The trumpet will sound, the graves will give up their dead, and the judgment will take place. And so everything that is happening between the ascension and the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ the second time is Jesus putting all things under his feet. You will put all things in subjection under his feet, right? This is taking place today. Now, we have a tendency to walk by sight and not by faith. We look around, we see the evil, we see all of the wickedness, we see the growth in sin and all of these things, and our hearts and our minds are drawn to think that all these things must take place before Jesus returns. And so it's just going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. Well, that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches us that there are going to be days of plenty and days of famine. And those days of plenty and those days of famine are managed by the king of kings in the heavenly places. And the reason why we are in a time of uh, of famine today is because we are a wicked and evil people. We have turned aside, we've turned away, we have engaged in all numbers of licentiousness, and we are receiving the due reward of, for our transgressions. Jesus is actively involved in history. And what should be our response to these things? Well, it should be repentance. It should be turning back away from the means of our destruction and turn back under the means of God's grace. And so a passage like this gives us comfort as well as encourages us to not concern ourselves with the success of the evil one. We know that the evil one himself is also under the reign of Jesus. For in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we do not yet see all things put under him. Again, it may not seem like this is the case, but dear brother and sister, it is the case. And we are to live boldly in light of these truths because Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords. We are not to fear this present evil world, for it has no power over us. For we are servants of the king. We are brothers and sisters of the king. We are prince and princes and princesses in his palace. And so remember that as you're tempted by the devil. Remember that as you are tempted by the flesh, as you are tempted by the world around you. They have no power over you, even if they can kill the body. We are to fear the one who can kill the body and soul in hell. And Jesus is the one who has that power, that authority. And so we are to worship him. We are to praise him. And we are to give thanks again for his death. As we see here, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, might taste death for everyone. Again, Jesus, who has tasted death for sinners, calls you unto himself today. If you happen to be watching this and are not a believer, Hear what Paul has read here. Hear what he has told you. Christ is dead for sinners. Come and welcome unto him. If you are a believer and in a time of wandering, look back and see what Jesus has done for you. And remember, no matter how far down the path you have walked, the Lord Jesus is here to embrace you in his grace, in his love, and his mercy. Take care. Have a wonderful week and be blessed in every way in the Son of God.